let's do something a tad bit more complicated, show some more capabilities of the chainsaw up here by creating a setup that was heavily inspired by what was in SideFX's launch presentation. So I want to build those individual geometric chains of hairs flopping around in a very abstract manner. Just going to delete that and going to build a quick vellum simulation for our hairs onto which we're going to use the chainsaw to instance geometry onto. So I'm going to drop down two circles, one along the ZX plane here. Let's set this to be a polygon with maybe 128 divisions like so. And let's just copy and paste this circle, dial back its uniform scale to maybe 0 0.3 and set its divisions to three only and wire both into a sweep node. The bigger one goes into the backbone, a smaller one into the cross section. And of course the cross section circle should be set to be oriented along the X and Y plane. So we'll end up with this. Also, we can see that the normals on this circle here, the second circle are flipped. So let's fix that using a reverse node. Next, I want to have this thing twisted in itself and also be moving. So on the sweep, let's drag this down and scroll down here in the rotation section. I want to dial in maybe one or two, let's stick with one full twist. And also I wanna animate this roll here. I'm gonna use an expression for that, $FF for our current frame, times minus five to speed this up a bit and to change its turning direction. So when I hit play now, getting this motion here. Let's scatter a few points on this using the new scatter and align node. You could as well use the normal scatter node. It doesn't matter in this case. I'm gonna set the point count method to a number of points. Let's stick with a thousand for now and wire this into our sweep here. Now, if we hit play, you might be able to see that some of those points jitter now. It is because each frame we're newly scattering those points onto this moving geometry. Instead, what I wanna do is just take the first frame here, the geometry on the first frame, which I'll get using a time shift set to frame one. So that's just perfect here. And I don't want the expression that's in here, the dollar frame. So I'm just gonna control click in here, set this to one manually and wire this in between. So we have now our animation frozen on frame one. As you can see, the points are not moving. And to get those points moving again, I'm gonna use a point to deform node. So the points to deform go in the first slot, then the rest point lattice. That means the undeformed mesh is that thing that comes out of the time shift, goes into the second slot, and finally our animated deforming mesh goes into the third node, like so. So if we highlight this now, fingers crossed, yeah, we can see those points being animated without flickering. Next, let's copy a few lines on them, which will function as hairs. So I'm just gonna create a line, maybe with 16 points. Have a look at this pointing upwards, okay. I'm gonna use a copy to points to copy this line onto the points we just created and animated. So here you can see, as mentioned previously in the tutorial regarding the scatter line, we're creating an P scale attribute here, which is a bit too small. So again, I'm gonna use an attrib randomize to give this new values, call this one P scale. It's just a single float, so only one dimensional. And let's set it to range between, I don't know, 0 0.2 and 0 0.5. Five-ish, maybe a bit larger, like so. Okay, now we can see we've got this animated lines here. Let's just check, I wanna ghost my sweep here. And yes, they are pointing away from the surface nicely. Okay, so this is my initial animation, which I wanna use in vellum. So I will just create a vellum hair constraint as I want these lines to be individual hairs and then attach a vellum solver. Now, if I hit play, you will see several things happening, but mainly our simulation totally failing. So the first thing I wanna do is pin those hairs to their initial positions just at the root. To do that on my line, which is my individual hair, I just wanna highlight the point numbers here. And the first point, point with the number zero should be pinned. And for that, I'll put that into a group. Wire that in below the line. I wanna set this to be points, call this one pin, as we're gonna pin this. And I want to enable this only for the point with the number zero. So if we middle mouse on this, we have only one point in the pin group now, which is perfect. Okay, back to our vellum hair here. And let's get rid of the point display here. In my vellum hair, when I drag this down, scroll down a bit, I get this section here, pin to animation, which is perfect, which is exactly what I wanna do. So I'll select the pin group we just created, set the pin type to permanent and enable match to animation. So this pin group, is dragged around while the simulation is running and while this mesh, this underlying mesh is moving. Now, if I highlight the Vellum Solver and hit play, you can now see I have this hairs attached to the original pin points. However, I have them also protruding into the geometry, the underlying geometry, because we are not taking account the collisions that happen with this underlying geometry in the simulation yet. To do so, let's just take this animated geometry 
and wired in the third slot on our vellum hair constraint, which is where the colliders for our simulation go into. So now we should have this geometry as a collider, and if we hit simulate again, we can now see those hairs colliding with a rotating geometry. One thing I might want to do in the vellum hair constraint when I go down to the bend constraints here is maybe increase the stiffness to 0.01 instead of 0.001, so 10 times as strong, so that the hairs become a bit stiffer. And I think a happy middle ground is somewhere in between, so let's dial back the stiffness to 0.5 times the scaling factor here. Let's resim. Yeah, and I quite like this. Okay, time for the star of this setup, the chainsaw. Our vellum hairs go into the curves and onto those I want to instance a bunch of geometry. So I'm gonna use a merge into which I'll wire a few primitives in this case using a box, which I will scale down quite drastically. Wire this in here, then maybe a tube set to be a polygon and also let's dial back its scale quite drastically. Let's just highlight this and this and the merge. Zoom in there and you can see two really small geometries here. Maybe the tube radius can be scaled back a bit and it definitely needs caps and vertex normals. Also on the box, I wanna enable vertex normals and maybe for good measure, let's add a sphere. Set this one to be a polygon as well and dial back its uniform scale too. And also let's give this one normals using a normal node here set to vertices, which is fine. And finally, let's copy this tube one more time, paste it here, right into the merge as well. And let's set the radius to zero on the first parameter, turning this into a cone. And maybe also let's decrease its height like so. Okay, so I've got this bunch of geometry here. Maybe the tube, let's decrease the height on that as well. And I'm feeding this into the chainsaw now. So let's highlight the chainsaw and that will take a while to instance and copy all those geometry onto my vellum strands here, to the vellum hair. And we can see the direction is messed up. I want to point this along the hair and not perpendicular to it. So again, in the chainsaw under alignment, let's fix the forward direction to Y. And now they're pointing outward, perfect. And now you can see we are iterating through all of these geometries which are wired in here in exactly the same manner. To break this up a bit, I wanna to go to the chain pattern and drag down this pattern menu here. And instead of repeating the pattern cyclically, I want to set this to be repeated randomly. So now the chainsaw just randomly places one of those four primitives onto my individual vellum hairs here. Let's just check rigidity. We don't want these to be deformed. And under fusing, let's not fuse the repeated geometry. Okay, if we skip forward a bit, you can now see that this happens through all the simulation and is looking really nicely. Let's maybe give those individual geometry pieces here a color using a color node here, which I'll wire below each one of those primitives. And I don't know, let's give the box a orange color, go with a bluish green, greenish blue for the tube. I like a bright, very powerful, colorful pink for my sphere, and maybe something blue for the cone, like this. Okay, what I could do now for final rendering is maybe increase the number of hairs in the simulation. So let's just highlight the vellum solver here and go up to the scatter align and in here, increase the number of total points to maybe 3000. And then let's run the simulation again, which of course is gonna be a tad bit slower, but it's still bearable. And after we run a few frames, let's again check our chain node here, which will take a short while to create all this geometry on those hairs. Let's just drop down a null, call this one out and render it. Again, using Karma and Solaris. So let's switch over to Solaris. And in here, let's first drop down a SOP import to import our geometry into this context, just pointing it to the out node we just created. We can see the geometry coming through here. And to this, as always, let's attach a material library to give this a quick principal shader, which I'll just create in here. Just wanna increase the base color to white. Wanna make sure that the use point color is checked. So we're gonna use this colors we wrote on this geometry here. And for now, let's go back to our stage context here and control click on our environment light and on the camera to create both a dome light into which I will pipe an HDR and a camera through which we'll look in. So for the dome light, I'll just point this to an HDR which I downloaded by just clicking on this icon and then making sure I have this show sequence as one entry unchecked and selecting my HDR like so. Also, I want to dial up its intensity to maybe eight. And in my camera, I wanna pin this to the viewport, make sure it's selected and then maybe increase its focal length to 85 millimeters and bring this in a bit 
And let's just switch our viewport over to Karma and see how that looks in rendering. Almost a bit too bright, so let's dial back this dome light's intensity to maybe six. And after our camera, let's attach a Karma render properties node in which under the limits tab, I will increase the diffuse limit to maybe four, giving a bit more bounce in here. And now one final tweak I wanna make. Let's just scroll down here and go to the film strip, drag this down, take a snapshot of our current rendering and maybe double click on it to open it up in M plate. One final thing I'd like to do is add some edge roundness here, chamfer those edges a bit. And I could do that in SOPS and just chamfer my cube and maybe the cylinder geometrically. However, what I wanna do this time is in the material library, in the principal shader, I wanna use another bump and normals tab, this round edge radius here, which I'll check and maybe manually refresh the rendering by just switching to the animation editor and back to the scene view. And now tweaking this round edge radius a bit. And of course, for all this to work, what I was totally missing here, let's go back to the stage. I didn't properly assign this to my geometry here. So I want to check assign to geometry and then in here, select all geometry primitives to have the shader now properly assigned to our geometry. And now we can see a, the colors coming through better. Also a bit of reflection. And finally, let's wait a bit for this to converge and take another snapshot of this, go into M play. And now we're seeing some weird things happening in the reflection here. And I think that's my rounded edges shader coming through. So now let's finally properly start tweaking it by I think dialing back the edge radius quite substantially. So I was a bit too enthusiastic about this in the beginning. Let's try a value of 0 0.005. That still seems a bit strong in those areas here. So let's try 0 0.002. And I think we're at a point now where I might go into tweaking those colors. I'm not sure if I like this super poppy comic look. And also one last thing, if you're annoyed by the noisiness of this thing, what you can do in Karma, in the Karma Render Properties, in the Image Output tab, under Filters, you can enable Denoiser. For example, the Optics Denoiser, which in some cases might give good results. For example, with a scene like this, it's really converging really quickly. However, it is absolutely dependent on the scene you're rendering. So if you have lots of refractions, reflections, it might not work as decently as here. But yeah, let's just take a snapshot of this here, compare it in M Play. So that's our current state, including denoising. And that was our previous state with the coarse round edges and also without denoising. All right, I think I'll keep on tweaking this. I'll provide the finished scene file as a download link. And if you wanna learn more about Houdini in general, or if you wanna plainly support us, consider becoming a patron of ours, which will also give you access to more in-depth courses and to everyone already supporting us. Thanks so much, guys. Without you, Entagma would not be possible. And a very special thank you goes out to Patrick Fillion, Important Looking Pirates, Rafik Anadol, and Chris Hebert. Thanks so much, guys.